Ciao and welcome. So Julia has uh, kicked off the Tortellino 2024 mini Christmas series already by baking a delicious uh, Christmas cake. The last episode will come out a couple of weeks before Christmas. Today I will kick off the Sicilian and Italian side of the series by cooking a delicious Christmas caponata. I have done caponata on the channel before, but that is a traditional caponata. This is going to have a strong Christmas taste. Look at the amount of uh, aubergines I've got in front of me and also ingredients, uh, quite a lot. I'll be making quite a large batch because uh, I want to preserve it as well. So as part of this video, I'll show you how I preserve my caponata and uh, also I will be posting uh, the recipe for much smaller quantities should you wish to make it a uh, small batch. So I'll get all the ingredients ready, chopped up and so on, and then uh, I'll uh, make a start. And I'm back and after 20 minutes of uh, chopping and weighing, <laughs> I'm done. And by the way, the aubergines, I've chopped them uh, in approximately one centimeter cube. Here, I'll show you. Um, try not to do them too small, otherwise they'll disappear. And one of the beautiful things about caponata is that uh, you want to retain the texture as well as uh, being nice to look at. And uh, likewise, I've done the same with the other ingredients. Here are my onions and uh, I've also chopped um, some celery and if you look, uh, I left, uh, oops, I lost it. I left them in uh, relatively big sizes. Now, um, reference the aubergines. Uh, if you are um, chopping them, make sure that you keep them uh, covered while you're getting the ingredients ready. Otherwise, they will turn black. It's not the end of the world, but uh, always good to do so. So I'll get my industrial size uh, cooking pot and I'll start very much with the aubergines. I'm using six aubergines and in total they weigh 2.4 kilos. They weigh approximately 400 grams each piece and that's going to be what drives everything else. So if you want to adjust uh, the recipe proportionally, just uh, divide everything by six and uh, multiply by two, by three, whatever, how many aubergines you might be using or indeed uh, how much is in weight the quantity you're cooking. Also, the one thing I've done, I've adjusted all of the ingredients in such a way that you can adjust it proportionally. So hopefully you will be able to follow the recipe and you don't have to make such a big batch, of course. I just added a little oil in my little pot <laughs> and I'll start by adding some of my aubergines. One teaspoon of salt, a little bit more oil, second half of my aubergines, another teaspoon of salt, and one last uh, drizzle of olive oil. So the salt will help uh, the aubergines uh, sweat and they will release in some water. The oil will help uh, with the uh, light frying, but this is incredibly, incredibly healthy way of uh, cooking the aubergines. They will be going on the hob with the lid on, but before I put them on the hob, a good shake so that uh, the salt and the oil is equally distributed. I'll start them on the maximum temperature, number nine, as you can see here, and uh, they're beginning to steam already and uh, sizzling. So I'll just give an initial mix to make sure that nothing is stuck at the bottom. And I'll turn the temperature down onto number four, which is medium low, and I'll put the lid back on and I'll leave them uh, to now simmer. They will take about 20 to 25 minutes to cook. They will be ready when they are soft and translucent, but every few minutes, maybe four to five minutes, I'll go along and I'll give them a little mix to ensure that nothing gets stuck to the bottom. I'll show you once they're done. And of course, in the meantime, we can crack on with the other ingredients. Olive oil in any saucepan. And I always like a combination of white and red onion with my caponata, so here they go. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see that I've left them nice and large in size. And like I did with the aubergines, I'll mix them together so that they're all covered in oil. The onions have been sizzling for a good four minutes and I can add my celery now. I will leave this now to cook together for a good uh, seven to eight minutes and just like I did uh, with uh, the aubergines, I'll place the lid on and they'll cook considerably quicker. I'm weighing some uh, black and uh, some uh, green uh, pitted olives. I want about 400 grams, that's perfect. Normally I would use uh, just green uh, olives, pitted olives for this recipe, always pitted by the way, <laughs> always safer. But um, I've got uh, mine in, uh, in a jar and I buy them uh, already pitted and I add uh, in olive oil and uh, I put some black ones because um, they are sweeter and bearing in mind that uh, I'm doing a, a Christmas uh, caponata, a little bit of sweetness in the olives is also very welcome. And uh, having dealt with the olives, I can move on to the agrodolce. Agrodolce is uh, effectively a vinaigrette and it is a, absolutely an essential ingredient uh, for a caponata. Without agrodolce, you cannot make a caponata. 
it stands for sweet sour or sour sweet one or the other i'm not altogether sure julie is not here to help me today but it consists of um, vinegar and uh, sugar mostly and generally uh, they use uh, white wine vinegar but i like uh, a blend of uh, apple or cider vinegar and uh, white wine vinegar so mine is a 50 50 split and uh, here is my vinegar and uh, i will also be adding uh, my sugar to it i'll do that now and do not worry you will not be able to taste the vinegar because uh, the sugar offsets and balances uh, the acidity of the vinegar and once it cooks uh, the flavor of uh, the vinegar and the sweetness of the sugar will give uh, the carbonata a beautiful beautiful balance anyway this is ready so i can put it on one side the next ingredient is quite expensive, a pine nuts. Uh, I will be using it because uh, I want to replicate uh, my recipe, but uh, sunflower seeds is also a good substitute. Very often uh, when I make it uh, in the summer, I will use sunflower seeds. However, today to complement the pine nuts, because uh, I didn't fancy spending a fortune, I will also be using uh, some cashew nuts. And uh, to stay in the spirit of uh, Christmas, I roasted uh, some almonds uh, and uh, very simply I just put them on a frying pan, nothing at all and I put them on the hob for three or four minutes, fairly high, medium high temperature and uh, you can see that they've roasted nicely and uh, they will be lovely and crunchy, I will uh, crush them on a moment but also they will give a lovely Christmassy flavour to my caponata. And talking of which I'll do that next. Onions and celery are nearly done and uh, before I move back to the hob I'll show you the remaining ingredients. Uh, I've got here some uh, mixed uh, dry fruit. Normally I would uh, just use sultana to just replicate the true Sicilian recipe but being Christmas uh, there's a little bit of a uh, mixed peel in there as well which would be absolutely wonderful. Capers is another key ingredient of caponata and uh, I've uh, washed them as they're always very salty and uh, drained them and they're ready. I've uh, halved uh, some uh, Plum tomatoes, you can use uh, cherry tomatoes if you like, or if you cannot get hold of any fresh tomatoes, you can also use uh, the tin tomatoes. Also, I will be adding some tomato puree and a little cinnamon and nutmeg to give uh, my caponata the festive flavor. Also, a few cranberries and uh, the zest from uh, one orange. So let's remove the lid. And in no particular order, but I'll start with uh, my chopped tomatoes. I'll turn the temperature up a little, medium high, and I'll uh, add also my olives capers, mixed dry fruit, pine nuts and cashew nuts, almonds, followed by the tomato puree, cinnamon, and lastly for now nutmeg, approximately half a teaspoon. And I've delved in with my wooden spoon and mixing everything together and I have to say there is already a fantastic Christmas smell coming up. Try not to lose your ingredients. And I'll put the lid back on again and uh, I will leave it now on a medium temperature, number five, for about five minutes. But let's take a look at the aubergines. Here I'll move the pot so you can see better. And look how much they shrank by. It never fails to amaze me how much they reduce in volume and all of the water they've released. But as you can see, they are translucent and they are ready. And uh, that is why I kept them uh, nice and chunky so that uh, you can still see the shape of the aubergine. But I'll put them back on and uh, I will uh, turn the temperature down on number three until uh, my sauce is ready. So time to combine everything together. I'll move it to the middle. Temperature is medium high and I'll leave it medium high and uh, I'm going to add uh, all of my other mix to the aubergines. Very gently. Wonderful. Do not be tempted to turn the temperature up by the way. Leave it on number seven or medium high. Otherwise, uh, it might catch the bottom and spoil your caponata. Everything is well combined, and I think I can add uh, my agro dolce vinaigrette next. There it goes. You might find that there is a little sugar left, so just uh, pick some up and uh, <laughs> wash it uh, with your mix, and uh, in it goes again. Mix it once again, and I'll uh, put the lid on, and uh, I'll turn the temperature down again on the medium low, number four. There. And I will leave it to gently simmer for the next 20 minutes, after which uh, we can take a look and if it's done, we can then add uh, the cranberries and uh, the orange zest. So I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Wonderful, and uh, I've been joined by Julie. Hi, Julie. Hello. Uh, and uh, for the last two minutes, as there was still a little bit of smell of vinegar. Two minutes. I, yes, two minutes. I removed the lid so that all of the smell is gone now. So make sure that uh, there is no smell left of vinegar. So, a few more things left. Handful of basil, in it goes. 
And just like any other dish, put it at the end, it will release all of the flavor. By now you will be familiar with uh, the orange zest, so I'll add it now. And uh, my Christmas touch with the uh, cranberries. And listen to the noise, Julie. Lovely. I'll give everything one good final mix. So I'll uh, spread the load so that uh, it will cool down slightly quicker. But if you're in a hurry and you want to eat it quickly, you can always put it on a shallow um, dish, entirely up to you. But uh, I've not finished yet. You could even put that dish, stand it in cold water and that would help. You could, it. yes. Ooh. Great. You might have noticed that uh, I've got some uh, empty jars here. And uh, Julie, if you don't mind, I'm going to wash my large pot as I will need it to sterilize the uh, glass. And I'll show you how to preserve them. You might have done this if you have made wine or beer in the past, but it's dead easy. So I've got a, a tea towel here, which I'll put at the bottom of my pan. That'll stop the glass from banging against the pot, but also against the other jars. So there's a danger that could break, of course. And I'm now removing all of the lids from my glass jars. I'm not sure how many I'll need, but I'll just do a few. And any left over, I'm sure that uh, we will eat it mm. <laughs> in the fridge once it's cold. By the way, in fact, I'd be disappointed if there isn't some <laughs> yeah, left. No, we will manage it. By the way, this is uh, good enough to eat already and uh, hot um, if you cannot wait, by all means, <laughs> give it a shot. But it will uh, taste twice as good if you leave it to cool down, put it in the fridge overnight, and have it tomorrow. Absolutely beautiful. Mm, but, the day uh, after that, or the day <laughs> after that. It's one of those things that improves with age. How to preserve it first. I've got this beautiful jar, which is uh, what we are going to be likely using on Christmas Eve. So I'll put that in the middle. That's what we used to keep our olives in until we got a new one. Yes. Second tea towel on top. And let's see how many I can fit in. One more. You're not ruining all my best tea towels, are you? I'm not ruining them. I'm actually giving them a good wash. You know what I'm thinking, everybody? I'm going to have these dodgy tea towels with no <laughs> colour, with a colour of mine. Hopefully not. And of course, do not forget to add the lids as well. And here, it doesn't have to be absolutely magnificent, just uh, enough uh, for you to protect the glass. Let's move to the sink. And to speed things up slightly, I'm going to be filling uh, the tot with uh, warm water from the tap. Do not use hot boiling water, otherwise uh, you might break the glass, as the glass is at room temperature, of course. So I'll uh, start pouring water until uh, everything is covered by water. I'm nearly, nearly, nearly there, and uh, the water is uh, reaching the top, and I'll turn it off my tap so that I don't overfill. And uh, effectively, you must make sure that uh, all of the jars have got water inside. You need a big, strong person. <laughs> yes, to <laughs> lift it up. It's quite heavy, actually. I'll put my hand underneath, another reason why not hot water. So then the hob on maximum, put the lid on and wait until it starts boiling. And literally within a couple of minutes, as my hob is quite powerful, you can hear that um, the lid is already shaking. I do not want it to boil too <laughs> vigorously, so I'll turn it down now. But I'll turn it down to medium uh, high, number six. And uh, I will uh, leave it now for a good 10 minutes so that uh, everything will sterilize and I'll show you what I'll do next. <laughs> Great, so we are ready and uh, I'll uh, move this here now. Julia has organized me a tray, ready mm -hmm. for the water. <laughs> so let's uh, remove all of my glass jars. I'm gonna use uh, some uh, uh, tongs so that I don't burn myself. And I'll uh, put them upside down. This will uh, obviously help all the water to drain away. Probably keeping the water for the next stage, aren't we? Yes, uh, um, thank you, Julie. Make sure that uh, you do it like this because we're going to be needing this water again, so that's why I'm not uh, disposing of it. But also, do take your time and be gentle because two things you don't want to break the glass as it's really, really hot, but also, you don't want to burn yourself. <laughs> This uh, reminds me slightly of uh, when uh, my mum used to make uh, la salsa, which is uh, tomato sauce in Sicily, where they used to make vast, huge quantities of mm. uh, bottles ready for the winter. Like a passata, wasn't it? Like a passata. They would buy the fresh tomatoes in big 
crates and maybe 10 to 12 crates, massive things <laughs> there were. And literally we would spend the day making a passata for the winter. And uh, this process is what we used to do by sterilizing the bottle first and then uh, filling them with the sauce and then boiling them. <laughs> it was uh, at the time a pain in the neck because it was always in the summer <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be on the beach playing. But thinking back, I do actually really, really like thinking that I did do that, I learned mm. a lot. All of my jars are out. Next job is to remove some of the water because uh, it's too much now. By the time I put them in uh, full, so I will uh, just uh, take some out. Now, dispose of uh, some, but I will keep uh, one jug full of hot water in case I need to top it up. Time to fill them up now. In the meantime, the caponata has cooled down slightly, which is a, a bonus because uh, we're going to have some for dinner. And you know, when you buy a jar of marmalade, it's not filled to the very, very top, that's the same. Make sure that uh, you leave a gap like this. In this particular case, this is the big one and I'm leaving a good inch. And I'll uh, carry on, I'll fill the other jars, I'll do the pretty looking ones first uh, and uh, I'll see you once I've done them. I'm putting some gloves on for two reasons. Uh, number one, because everything is sterile, I want to make sure that uh, I do not contaminate uh, my caponata with bacteria, but also the second reason is because uh, the water is really hot. <laughs> so uh, in a moment, I'm gonna have to put my hands in it. Can you hear the noise? Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered what that means? Always. Always, oh, yes. That is a little <laughs> trick that tells you that uh, the jam or whatever you might have bought is under vacuum. And that is what we're going to be doing now. I'm going to be pla placing the lid uh, back on uh, my, my jars, but uh, do not do it too tight because we will want uh, some air to come out when they go back in uh, boiling water. So how, how tight then? Um, look like this. If you so just just, just so it just so it gently shuts without doing it too much. When I will go back in water, the inside of the jar will be really really hot, and as I get it out and it cools down, the pressure differential between the inside of the jar and the outside environment will change, and the air inside the jar will compress, and it will pull the lid, and I'll tell you that everything is in the vacuum and uh, no bacteria, and then you can store it. But let me show you the rest of the jars now. Who knew we were going to get a science, in fact, chemistry <laughs> lesson, everybody? Wow. There you go. <laughs> of course, make sure play, that you yeah, got to play, play which lid. Find the right lid. Just gently, enough uh, for them to seal. And uh, by the way, this is uh, what we have got left. So there'll be a good amount for us to have tonight for dinner and uh, some uh, in the fridge for the next few days. Next few days, I doubt they'll be. Tomorrow. And not maybe tomorrow, yeah. And that is my last one. And in case you're wondering, <laughs> three of these will be going to our children, one each. Uh, so whenever I make a big batch, they will take one and uh, they will eat it six, nine months down the line. And back to my water now, which is still really, really hot. So I'll uh, move my clothes out for a moment. And I'll do a very similar job as I did before. This time I also, you need to make sure that uh, you're even more careful because of course it's uh, full of your lovely caponata, so extra careful. The idea is that of course uh, the glass uh, from one jar should not be touching uh, either the glass uh, from another jar or indeed the side of uh, your pan or the, your saucepan I should say. And that is my last one, so they're all going back in again. And uh, very wisely I kept some uh, of the water, so I can now top it up. It's not as important that everything is covered now because uh, this is about creating uh, the vacuum next and uh, whereas before was about making sure that everything was cleaned so I'm happy that it's good enough so otherwise all Let's the water will come out. So I'll cover them up. Do you not need to tuck a little bit between those two jars? Yeah, there you go, look. And just like before, no need to show you again, I will uh, gently, very gently bring them to a almost boiling uh, temperature and then I'll leave them uh, to gently boil, maybe medium high. Like a simmer. About, like a simmer, enough for the hot bubble to come up for about 10, maybe 15 minutes because there's quite a lot in there. And then uh, we'll see you then. Deja vu. <laughs> Here we are again. Here we are again, yeah. Okay, if you're doing this at home, you do not have to take them immediately out. What I tend to do, I tend to leave them uh, overnight and uh, the water will cool down and then tomorrow morning I'll get the, <laughs> the jars out and I'll store them away. However, as I'm making a video, I'll just finish the video and I'll show you. But uh, 
clearly you don't have to do this as I just said. So like I did before, I'm fishing my jars and I'll put them out ever so gently though. And here is my big masterpiece. There. And if you want to make the exterior also very Christmassy, ready for your Christmas party, I'll show you what I do. Can you hear the Julia put my mic next to it? Yeah, yeah. That is the change in pressure from uh, between the inside of uh, the jar and the outside. So that is exactly what's happening and that the vacuum is being created as we speak. So here I have uh, a ribbon and uh, Julia's just given me a, a quick masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> so she's cut also a little triangle for me. And the ribbon is uh, three times uh, the circumference of my jar, by the way. And I'll go along and uh, I'll do a quick uh, bow. And you might have realized that these are not my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Julie's hands. She's decided to take over because I was making a mess. I couldn't bear it. <laughs> He's a little bit cack-handed, everybody, so he was unable <laughs> to make a bow. Now, you're going to have to explain what cack-handed means. Cack-handed. Well, that's exactly what you are, my dear. It means you were struggling with the delicacies of doing a yeah, pretty well, bow. You've done this for years. So although I said I'm going to show you what I do, I'm going to show you what Julie does, mm. what Julie's showing you. Not actually the best ribbon as that's it happens, fine, no, but fine. it's quite Just pretty. It and then to make sure that they're the same length, because I'm a little bit sad, <laughs> I will Cut do it. that. And there he sits. Look. Beautiful. And uh, it's ready. You'll be pleased to hear. Julie has uh, done a beautiful... <laughs> done a little arrangement. Arrangement look. for me. And uh, by the way, if I press this now, you can see nothing happens and the same is here. So the vacuum is working. I'll quick taste it, although it is still a little bit warm, so not uh, an ideal um, scenario in terms of tasting carbonata. May I point out, this is an Italian thing because the English people in the room thought it was lovely and I can't <laughs> wait to eat it as it is. Yeah, but it tastes considerably better. It will improve, gone. but it's still <laughs> lovely. Anyway. Mm. Here he goes, he's got a great big mouthful. Sorry. By the time I put it in, it was too late. That's what she said. Away. <laughs> She's only jealous. <laughs> However, it's beautiful. It's zesty. The orange at the end um, did actually help being uh, zesty, but it's absolutely beautiful. There is uh, a very rich combination of uh, flavors. Sicily was uh, conquered by the Arabs. And the Arabs borrow lots of spices and uh, lots of rich uh, flavors, and uh, that's where Caponata most probably inherits some of its uh, characteristics. Absolutely deliciosa, and uh, this will go down a treat on Christmas Eve. And you know, hopefully, you will make it too, and uh, you can let me know what you think. Arrivederci, that's the end uh, of uh, tonight's episode, and uh, I look forward to the next one. Ciao, ciao, and buon appetito.